Hey there guys. So, for this week's video, it's quite, it's quite a different one because I was actually approached by someone in the library who knew that I was someone with an eating disorder and they've seen a couple of my videos and they were just asking for a bit of advice um, and the question that they asked was one that I haven't made a video on yet and it's something that I know that a lot of eating disorder people tend to be affected by and that's the issue of drinking diet soda or diet fizzy drinks and this person was saying that they're going through maybe three, four litres of the stuff a day to try and curb their appetite and they were just wondering what advice I could give them to try and get over this. Now before I get into this I want to say that I was massively into drinking these things when I was in the throes of my eating disorder. I remember when um, I was at home, my dad would go shopping to Costco, which, if you don't know, is just a massive store where they sell you things by the box. Uh, so if you want to buy a bottle of Coke, you can't buy a bottle of Coke. You have to buy a 24-pack of bottles of Coke. And, it, I mean, I think it works out cheaper. Uh, it's just about buying in bulk, really. But, yeah, when I was at home and... I'd see these things. I'd I, I drink probably about the same that this person was drinking, three, four litres of the stuff a day to try and get to try and curb my appetite. And I I mean it was horrible because yeah, you get the sense that something's going inside of you, but you never feel you, you never feel as though you're getting contentness from the thing that you're that you're drinking and on top of that you're going to the toilet quite a lot as well because you're drinking copious amount of, amounts of liquid and I mean that in itself can be quite an issue because it can cause your electrolytes to go a bit haywire uh, there's something called primary polydipsia and it's something that quite a few people with um, psychiatric disorders in general can exhibit and I mean one of the things that it can cause is a low sodium count which can cause some really uh, bad things to happen and I, I know this isn't an education video but just as an aside some of the things that hyponatremia or a low sodium count can cause is you know it can cause you to become quite lethargic it can cause you to become quite dizzy and this can go towards things like having seizures or um, the brain stem herniating through the um, the hole at the bottom of your skull, and this is because uh, because you've got such a low sodium count, you the um, you essentially get water on the brain, and this forces the brain downwards. So in general, it's not a very good thing if you continue to do this to try and curb your appetite. So, I mean, what advice could I give this person? Well, I gave it based on personal experience and the way that I went around sorting sorting this out. Now, as ever with any video, it's important that you let someone know, and in this case, this person came to me. If you are struggling, I advise that you speak to someone who you know can help you through this, and this could be a family member, this could be a friend. Uh, when I was at home, my dad was the one who noticed this, and he, he I mean, he just wanted to try and help. Uh, I, I mean... I was, I was quite proud. I wanted to try and do things on, by myself. So I said, look, I'll, I'll, I will sort this out. I will get around doing this. But for now, just stop buying it. And I know this was quite annoying for him because he occasionally liked to have a Coke with his whiskey or something. But I was like, just for now, stop. So, yeah, first step, let someone know about it. Because it is very important that you let someone know because you can get first-hand experience or just some help to get you through this. So, I mean, what did I do next? Well, yeah, I told my dad to stop buying it, so I just tried to narrow down the source. But, I mean, for some people, this isn't enough because they will just go out and buy some more. Uh, I mean, when I was at home, I was about a mile away from the nearest main shop. So, uh, it, it wasn't really an option unless I really, really wanted to get Coke. So, I mean, I mean what did I do? Well... <laughs> I, I tried to, the first, I mean, the first and most obvious thing to do is to have a meal plan in place, and that was provided for me by the eating disorder unit that I was at. And, I mean, that was a key cornerstone because I had structure. I knew that I was meant to be eating at certain points in the day, and that would make me feel actually full rather than trying to feel 
falsely full. So, I mean, that, that is very, very important. However, when you are, you know, really struggling about what, knowing what to do, and you know that you're drinking lots and lots of Diet Coke, or diet anything during the day, but you do have a meal plan in place, and you just feel compelled to do this. I mean, the main thing that I did was I just stopped the sauce, and I went towards other forms of liquid, and I mean, that was just water. So I stopped drinking all caffeinated products, essentially. That, that includes coffee, that includes Coke, and all of these things were important because it it just stopped me from doing doing more of it. And a lot of people say that they have these caffeinated products to help curb their appetite. And yeah, this is this is true. Uh, caffeine is an appetite suppressant, but at the same time, it causes you to become jittery. It causes you to become very ir irritable, and it can cause you to develop insomnia. And I was experiencing all of these things. I would become very jittery. I was unable to sleep until like 3 o'clock in the morning. It was horrible. And I guess this was one of the things that drove me to wanting to stop. Because I didn't want to feel like this anymore. I knew that it was affecting me uh, as a person. But it was also affecting me in my studies. Because I wasn't able to wake up at the right time. I wasn't able to work efficiently. Because... The caffeine crash was just stopping me from working. And a lot of people just say, oh, I'll just drink more coffee. But then you just end up doing this most of the time. Whereas now, now that I've stopped drinking all of these caffeinated products, I can just teeter on like this. And I can work 12 hours in a day fine. And it's it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. So what you really have to do is try and focus your efforts in drinking non-caffeinated non-fizzy drink products that don't have any flavour. Water does have flavour, but it doesn't give you the sense that you're eating something. It doesn't give you the sense that you're falsely full in any in any way, shape or form. So you don't get that same sense. And it is important that you do that so that you can just go towards a more healthy way of doing things. And this I mean, what I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm not saying here is that you, you know, stop it forever. It's important that you stop it completely at the start and just show to yourself that you can stop it and just drink water from that point onwards. However, when you feel more comfortable, when you feel that you've got things more in, in control, you can have the odd Coke, you can have the odd diet beverage, um, but... It's just, you, you, you know that you're having it because you want it, rather than because you feel that you should, because it will make you feel full. And, I mean, therein lies the key, the key point. Uh, I mean, occasionally I may have a, a fizzy drink, and I know that I'm having it because I just fancied it. And it's just important you get towards that point before you start making those decisions. And if you are feeling that you are struggling... Uh, with this, please do f feel free to let me know, and I'll try and guide you in any in any way that I can. If you have any questions related to this, please feel free to let me know or leave it in the comment section below, and I look forward to um, answering your questions. But for now, thanks for watching.